Welcome to another video from Dr. Locke. What we have on the bench here is something quite unusual that I haven't seen before. These are vault locks. These are from a vault and they're basically safe locks but they're from a vault so make them vault locks. Alright so there's two of them and um, these locks have been opened before by somebody with quite a lot of talent because they haven't butchered the locks but they've managed to get them open and the way they've done that is quite interesting. They've drilled one hole at the exact right point. So if you could imagine a big huge massive bank vault door and they've drilled one hole and they've been able to go through and find it the exact spot where the lock operates and then they've been able to manipulate via the keyhole. Now the door itself is probably uh, about that thick, uh, 50, 70, 80 mil thick. So all this is happening behind there. So that particular person would have needed a drilling template to know exactly where that hole is to drill. They would have had to drill through the steel, know that there's no relockers, there's no fancy stuff behind the door, armor plating or funny bits of angle or anything like that. Finally get to the lock and then after, at that point they need to manipulate it open. Now these are quite classy locks because they're quite old. Well, I don't know exactly how old. If somebody knows, maybe they could leave it down in the description because it's not a brand that I'm actually familiar with. Another thing I've noticed here is that um, the locks themselves have serial numbers on them and they've got a brand. They've got a fish brand. So that's interesting in itself. The drill hole here hasn't actually gone through and wrecked any levers so we're, we're in a good position here. When I uh, came across the lock the curtain was actually turned like this which means somebody had been picking it and that prevents the key from getting in. So there's a little bit of work to do with them um, to get them back up to scratch but I believe we can do it. Hopefully they'll be key like but being a bank vault they're most likely going to be key to differ because the whole idea behind these type of locks is that you need two separate different keys to unlock the vault. You can have the vault in a position where one lock remains open and you can use it with the one lock if you want um, making it a little bit easier. Alright so let's zoom in and let's have a look at the logo. Let's see what we can see from that because that is interesting. There we go and focus Okay, so we have a serial number and then we have a fish and then it says patent and it's a brass case and probably made on some sort of jig, bent up, so it would have been a fairly common lock back in its day. Now we don't see many things like this. So this fish logo, if you know who that is, maybe you could uh, leave a comment. It's got some very, very small words there. Um, I can't read. I need to get a light on it and a magnifying glass to try and work that out. Uh, C. Let's see if we can bring it up. C H U E S, London. Oh, it's actually Chub. C H U B B, Chub, London, and it's got a picture of a fish. So I don't know when Chub changed their logo to. Uh, Oh, there we go. to a fish. I've never seen that before. Chubb's always had a, a different logo, but maybe other people who have worked on safes and things like that would be more aware of it. And leave it down in the comment if you've uh, seen this before, because um, even just looking at it from the naked eye, looking at this hallmark on it, it's it's quite unusual. I've never seen it. C-H-U-B-B -B, London with a fish. And of course the serial number and the patent on there. So yeah, not an easy lock. I could not walk up to this and just uh, pick it open, not without uh, special picks, specially made picks and specially made drill, drill template, a drill jig to know where to drill. So I can see over the years it's been brazed here and it's been brazed here. So let's go through and have a look and just see what the makeup of this lock is because that's probably what a lot of people are interested in seeing. I mean, we've never... I've never, in all my years of locksmithing, seen the logo with the fish, Chubb with a fish, so I've seen it written as C-H-U-B-B, -B, but, but never a fish. Maybe it goes back to 1920s, I don't know. I just don't know, but I know these locks are older than, older than normal. And I know they're coming off uh, quite an expensive vault back in the day. Even the vault door still has one millimetre of clearance all the way round, and it's a really good really good door. All right off she comes, a little bit of resistance. Okay that's the lid and off it comes there. Okay so we have levers with a bolt throw in the middle so it looks like three on top, three on the bottom 
and uh, the bolt throw in the middle with a curtain. So I've seen this type of setup before. Ross, uh, Ross Locks in Australia make this setup where they put the, the bolt throw in the middle and it helps prevent picking. So we'll just take this lever out to start with. So what's happened here is somebody's actually drilled, um, they've drilled here and you can see the score right there of where they drilled to get that sweet spot so that they could um, get the bolt to move. And they also looks like they drilled out the the um, post, I guess, for the for the levers. We have a curtain here as well, which helps center the key. So the key basically goes in there and it rotates around. It helps center the key and it also prevents picking because when that's in there and that rotates around, it stops people from being able to get tools in there and flick them up and it keeps the key centered. So this little part here is kept into place by this one here. And what I've noticed is that that part was on the other side. So if that was on the other side, somebody had this turned around like that and this lever was keeping that in place, which can only tell me it was deliberately done to stop somebody from using this particular, this particular lock. So that's interesting. So if we were to want to put it back into service, we would put that over this side, spring this back over here and have it so that the key could go in the right spot. I'm also noticing here that uh, this lever is hitting, hitting on this curtain here. I think, sorry, hitting on this post here. I think they have made another curtain, another post for it, sorry, because that should not be hitting that. This should be in here like this, holding it in this position under spring under spring pressure like this like that hmm very interesting anyway uh, so we're going to make a key to it uh, so we're just going to take it apart uh, looking at the the levers here one thing you might notice is there's a fair bit of graphite in here a lot of people seem to think that um, lubricating with an oily substance and all that for safe locks is a good idea I've always been taught to lubricate with graphite with this type of lock so Maybe different people from different areas do it different, but that's the way that I've kind of always been taught. I mean, graphite seems to be quite, quite good. So there's the first lever out, and you can see there's a little bit of a drill score there, uh, but the lever will still be usable. And they're an unusual lever too, the actual size of them and all the rest. So the key's going to go in here, and then it's going to push on this lever here, and it's going to bring this lever up to a height where this can slide in and slide out. So I'm just going to take them out so we can see the complete lock makeup. This post is definitely, definitely replaced, and you can even see the drill score where it's been drilled. Um, so obviously somebody's even possibly replaced levers because these haven't been repaired, and we've got a drill score here. So, all right, what do we got here now? Okay, so we've got a big plate. Okay, that's our big plate now, and you've got a little bit more of a drill score there too. Somebody's really drilled this. So when the key comes in here, it's going to pick up here, come into the middle, and, and pull it back, and push it forward. Okay, and we have another three, um, three levers down here. So I'm taking these out, I'm just putting them in order, and I'm gauging up how usable this lock will be, and whether or not I'm going to make a key for it and spend the time make a key because if it's not usable if it's damaged in some way there's no way I want to put it back on a vault door if it's ever going to have a possibility of jamming up so just checking the parts they seem okay that seems to be brazed in I can tell by all the sanding and scuff marks that it's definitely uh, had a bit of a hard life all right so so far so good this part here okay so there's not much really to keep that in in line except for the case a lot of the time they have a, a recessed section in there so it aligns with the back of the case and the front of the case. I guess that might have been before they started doing that. Okay, so sliding forward, sliding back. The actual movement in this, we're probably talking about uh, 10 mil. That's all it does, 10 mil. Okay, so I'm fairly happy with the levers. I think they're going to be usable. So let's put them back in one by one and then we will start to make a key. Try and find something that will work this and then... Uh, Put it back. All right, so all the score marks are up here, so that's okay. That's just going to give it more clearance. It's not uh, too sloppy. I, th I think it's going to be savable. If you know what era this is, and uh, if you've ever worked on one of these, and you've got some comments you'd like to share about this, please let me know. All right, so I, I was wrong. I'm counting three levers on the bottom and four on the top. Seven, seven lever lock. 
that's quite a quite a number of levers there. Just checking if everything is yeah, that seems okay. A little bit of movement there. Yeah, a little bit of movement in the pack, okay. And then this one on top. And this is all brass too. And then this one uh, back on the top to uh, to lock it in. Interesting, very interesting. Okay, let's get going. All right, so I've just pulled uh, the lid off the second one and I'm a little bit more happy with this one because the mechanism and all the aftermarket work or work that's been done on it over the years and things, I think this is a nicer, tidier unit. So I'm gonna go with making keys to this one. We only have to make keys to one because it'll be used as a single lock door afterwards. So I'm choosing this one to make the the key to. I can see a little bit of corrosion and things on these levers but it's generally on the side. I can see a little bit of a drill mark here but they haven't actually repla replaced the post before or this post here. So considering we've only got one little drill mark I think this is the better option to go for. And I must say the person who drilled this, who drilled this hole, was definitely um, a very cluey person. They've drilled like a 9.7 mil hole to be able to get this open through a massively thick door and I mean, when you walk up to a vault, there's no way to know what type of lock it is unless you know something about the, the vault. So that's interesting to know that they uh, knew all about that. I mean, going back in the old days, I guess it was more common. People would know about these type of things and then it'd be somebody special who goes out there, just works on particular brands of safes or um, just works on opening particular lock mechanisms. So interesting that it is, I mean, to have four levers on top and three down the bottom. Interesting again. I haven't seen that uh, too often these days. All right, let's make a key. All right, so I've gone over the keyboard and I need to find a key that's actually gonna fit. Now, one of the biggest problems is the, the length from here to here. I've gone through some other Chubb uh, and Jackson key blanks and what I'm noticing is, yes, I can get them to go in, but they're way too small. As you can see there, we're, we're missing a few levers here. So that's part of the security that they're such a old fashioned key and the length of the actual bit on the end is longer than expected. This is the only one that I think might do us some justice so that has to go there and it looks like we've got a little bit of room on top and a little little bit of room when we come through all right so let's cut it up now Okay, so what I've done is I've marked and I've trimmed the top of the key and when I was taught, I was always taught to use a hacksaw because it saves the blade of the key machine and um, you get a lot done with a hacksaw. So I've just marked it, hacksawed it down and I've left it as high as possible and it barely fits through there because we want the height. We want as high as possible so a lot of these keys they need a high point and we don't know where that high point is just yet so we keep it as high as possible. Now I just need to hit Okay, so I've done some measurements and normally this, these key blanks are, are quite true, like they're quite precise, but what I've noticed is here we have a flat edge here and on this side it lips out just a little bit. And I've started to file it just here along this edge here and what I'm noticing is it's starting to go in nicely. It's going to the lock. I put some black marker on there just so I could see where it was actually catching on and when I've uh, cleaned up the blank it now works quite well. So we've got our length and our height our gauge is right yeah, but I did have to just give it a little bit of a lineage just along here and just along here because the key blank was close but it wasn't 100% right and wouldn't slide in the other thing we have to consider is the length of our key so I this is kind of all I've got so I'm, I'm hoping that this will be long enough to get through the door if not I'm gonna have to recut it so fingers crossed let's see how we go all right so now we've got our key actually for this particular lock, like we've got a, a bit of length going on it, we have to kind of work out a few other things. And the next thing I want to work out is exactly how high this is here, because we know that this rubs up against here, so that this should not be protruding any more than what's here. So to do that, I'm just going to mark it, and then I'm going to put it on the key machine, and I'm going to cut that back section off. 
Now these are the levers, mixing them up is not really critical for us right now because it doesn't matter if we change combination on this or not. So I'm going to take out all the levers and I'll put them face down so I do kind of know the stack height. Some locks don't take too kindly to putting deep cuts next to high cuts. Um, all the keys, you know, often need to be done in such a way that they don't look silly or they're not um, got really big points up one end and low points down the other. So there is some patterns to the keys sometimes. So I'll try and retain that. So that looks like a little bit of, oh, no, that looks like it's been brazed. That lever looks like it's been to hell and back. I thought it was corrosion, but we can tell here by it's actually brazing. So that lever's really has seen better days. I might even swap this out with one of the other ones and put in a proper lever. Since we've got parts here and we're only using one of these locks, uh, let's let's swap that for that. Ah, we can even do better. That one's got a drill mark in it. That one's been repaired. getting better yeah, they've all been kind of repaired all right the best one I think is this one so that one can go there all right moving down now we take out this section here so this is a section that drives the key when the key is in here for an example uh, you can see that it goes in this point here and it will lift these levers and drive that point to drive the slide backwards and forwards. Okay. Okay, so here we are here with nothing but um, the end hole and one lever. So we can put that in there and we can see how that kind of works. And I can see automatically we're lifting up quite high on this side. So let's start from this point here and Let's mark the key. So this uh, uh, Sharpie marker that I'm using is pretty much just so that I can score it so that I can know where I'm at. We also have to keep in mind that this key has to protrude through this hole here. So what I'm going to do is just put this plate here so that will allow me to put the key all the way to the back without um, hitting the table. Also, we have to remember too that there's no top of the case. When this key is off center or up or down, anything like this, you're gonna get a different key read. So it's important to try and keep that as square as possible when doing this. So this is a bit of an old school art for locksmiths, like, you know, sooner or later that they're not gonna be doing this anymore. And you might notice here, there is a double bolt throw. So there's one on that plate three levers up and then there's one down the bottom here this is why we want to keep that key blank length high so as you see right in there it sits up in there if it was too low it might not push this bolt far enough so you want it as long as possible so it pushes all the way you can see here the travel that it's meant to be pushing push from left and push to right so I'm happy with the height there so let's put a lever in there and um, start to cut it up a little all right so where are we there? That's the open position. And let's go for our first lever. So it's a bit of a bit of an art to, to get a good mark. Okay, so that little scratch will only give me my spacing and we need to know how thick we want it now. So we can measure a, 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 a lifter or a lever, 1.98 or two mil. So I can go from my mark that I just got and give it a score. So I don't know if you can see that there, but I've got two little lines going there. Now I need to know how far up I, I want this to be. So at the moment it's pushing all the way up. So it's this section here. I need it to drop down. So how far do I need it to drop down by? What I can do is I can even use vernier calipers for that too. All right, I'm back with the first cut. Uh, cut that will be of many. We'll be making many, many cuts on this. So what I've done is I've just put a little cut in there just by eye and then from there I can gauge it if I need to do more and more and more. And one of the things is all of these little cuts that I put in here, they actually have to accommodate these levers. If they go over to the next one, see at the moment, that is so tight, that look at that. So realistically I'm gonna to need to just give it a little bit more movement. That's almost so tight it could sit in there without me holding it. 
I reckon I could find a spot and just get that in there. Okay, one cut and one hand filing down and we almost have our first lever. So we'll have to do this, probably each lever, backwards and forwards, five, six times. And that's part of the art of it. You need to get it right. It takes time. So I can see I'm still lifting that lever too high. It's a little bit hard to see, but I'm lifting it just a little bit. Okay, I'm back uh, with our um, third cut. And this time I use the machine and I cannot stipulate enough that um, without if you cut too much you'll have to start this process all over again if you cut too little you get a second chance and then you can bring it home by using a, a file and doing it slowly by slowly so if you can see the operation of it now we have our first lever in position and we want it to be exactly if you can see this we want it to be exactly in the middle between this gap and that is exactly what's kind of happening now Alright, so I've done my second cut on the machine, I've cut about 4 mil, and I can see it's very tight, and look at that, first go, I've got that lever. Alright, so I've just filed a little bit by hand, and I can tell that that key is in square, and we are moving along nicely. That is a very, very tight lever, that one. Okay, next, next lever now. So that goes in. We push all our levers like so. Get our Sharpie. Did we get a mark? Yes, we got a mark. Okay, lever number three, cut number one on the machine. See how we're going. Okay, still way too high. Okay, second cut on third lever on the machine. Let's see how it goes. A few little dags there. I'll just take them off. Just hitting them with a file just to keep my key clean. The burrs are gone. Okay, let's see where we're up to now. Almost perfect. All right, uh, third cut on third lever. And that's brought it down a lot, and that's moving nicely now. Uh, bolt throw here now. So we push this one back in, and we put it up the same right way around. We have a bolt throw. Each time I put something back in, I like to just continually check it. That also helps drive that uh, that bolt. That feels nice. So once again, same uh, same scenario. We're going to mark it, hold it in nice and square find that edge and give it a little score and then gauge up how much we want it to move by okay all right so you're probably thinking oh no you took one level down to the other level and you made a mistake uh, no when I got to the machine it occurred to me we can't make this cut the same as this and bring it across because we have this bolt throw in the middle and that needs to be remaining the same height as the back bolt throw so I've kept that one there and I've only used my mark on this side to gauge back one one lever keeping my bolt throw up so lucky we didn't do that otherwise we would have had to start again and I'm not really one of those people that like to start again and burn another key if I can avoid it if I can help it all right so we're close how close uh, another couple of mil okay lever number five pop that one in pop that one in Okay, lever number five, cut number one. I cut high, so it's not going to be up to size yet. Ooh, and it still needs more. Lever number five, cut number two on the machine. 
Is that still smothering the lever? A bit too tight and still a bit too high. Okay, Le lever number five, cut number three. Looking better. Okay, lever number six, cut number two. That one we uh, were just cleaning up. That middle bolt throw was being picked up in the wrong spot. Are we good there? Almost. Almost. So now it's just a matter of really uh, going through, seeing what is working, what's not working, what's getting held up or picked up or... Okay, so I can see uh, the fifth and the fourth, when I bring the key up, they're not happy. Okay, so lever six and uh, third cut or fourth cut, I had to adjust it by hand and I think we're getting somewhere. That looks good, that looks good. I think we're on the money now. Lucky last lever. Doesn't mean we're done, just means we're getting closer. Going to be a lot of adjusting and recalibrating afterwards and checking everything. Alright, seventh lever, first cut. Now the results, let's see what we got here. And of course we've got a little burr on the back of the key again. Okay, pop that key in. Go all the way and let's see if we can center it as much as we can and we're still too high okay seventh seventh uh disc sorry, seventh lever second cut now yeah when you look at this you have to imagine that this used to have a little leg that used to come down making the tolerance about this much now that that leg's been removed this will have quite a large amount of tolerance but because it's an old-fashioned lock and it's quite hard to pick and things like that for where this is it's not going to be that important that it's got uh, less security okay and we are turning all right now we're going to put the case back on and it's probably not going to turn because there's going to be uh, other other bits and pieces Hang on, I thought this was going to go around this way. Was it there? Okay. This is definitely this way. Okay, so it is wrong on this side. I was wrong originally. That is the right position. Yeah, that one there. Let's just uh, see how lucky we are. Back together before we put the screws in because I don't think uh, we'll be that lucky that it works first go and of course now that's all centered some of those levers and things will need a little bit more work and it's hard to see which one's playing up and it's hard to uh, actually we should be able to see through the window look at that some nice person has drilled a little peep peephole there for us Okay, so we can look straight through here and see what's what, and okay, so that I can tell straight away uh, the last one needs to come down, the six needs to come down, and the five need to come down. All right, let's hit them. Okay, so I've just taken down on the machine the um, I'll make sure you're in focus here, the seventh, the sixth, and the fifth. That looks good. Now let's go through and see how that looks now. A little bit tight there's probably burr on it. Hope you can see that nice little window that we've been provided. Okay. Seventh is perfect. Fifth still needs to go down. Seventh is perfect. Fifth needs to go down uh, a little bit and six don't know why but it's really high so we're good yep okay six and fifth let's still keep taking them down okay so when I put the key back in I can see that um, something funny is going on with one of the levers here on the uh, seven six on the fifth and I don't really want to have to start over another key, so I'm just going to pull it down again. 
and see if I can work out what's actually going on on the fifth. So that's a seventh, we're good. That's a sixth, we're good. So what's going on with this one? What's going on is we're picking up the next cut back to the key machine. Okay, now let's try that. Still a little bit tight. All right, so we got away with it before because the key was on an angle, but now we straighten the key up. It's a kind of a different story. So let's just go through. And okay, so the one in front of it now is giving us grief. Yep, I'm going to have to take that one down a little bit too. So that's the fourth. Oh no, that might be right. So we're a little bit clunky on that bolt throw, which is the one just below. So either we might have to ramp the key a little bit or just check it's uh... Okay, so yeah, I can see what's happening now. The bolt throw is a little bit too too big. Let's rub that down. Okay, so I've just taken a millimeter off the bolt throw uh, just to see if that... and it's still, still a little bit tight when I put it in there. It's like pushing the key down on, a, on an angle. You can see it there. So once I push on it, when I try and turn this around, basically, uh, it pushes my key downwards. So, back to the drawing, uh, back to the file for that one. Okay, let's try that bolt throw again. Still a bit tight. It's good on that side. It's okay. It looks like it falls in there nicely. Okay, so I've just widened that one as well. So, the first four levers look good, and everything seems to be okay with the key as square as possible. So let's start putting it back together and see how we're going now. Nothing. One, two, three. Uh, this one here. Pop that one in there. Let's see how we're going now. Ah, beautiful and smooth just like we like. Let's pop this one back in. Close it again. Beautiful and smooth, beautiful smooth. So once I get it all back together, uh-oh, that's not good. Okay, so now the springs come out. It's not damaged, but what I have to do is I have to hammer that back in, and then what they do is they use a letter. I can even see like it's got like a Z, and that just does a slight crimp uh, on both sides to and that side there looks like they used a, a letter B or something. So yeah, I'll just push that back in and get that repaired and then we'll, we'll carry on. All right, so that's my lever now repaired. So what I did is I hit it back in there with the hammer, then I used the hammer to, to push the meat over the top of it on both sides and kind of pan it in. And that seems to be okay. Now on this type of lock, um, the springs are good, but if it does fail or fall off or break inside the lock, that can um, cause us a little bit of grief. If the lock is mounted the right way, you won't notice it as much, but if it's not, then you will notice it. And what I'm noticing now is now that I've hit it, it's out of it's out of its uh, shape. All right, so this is my little cheating tool here. It's a deburr tool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run that around there a few times. And on this side too. Basically just scratches it back a bit and uh, tries to get that burr off. And look at that, that fits on there nicely now. Rather than re-drill it, I just uh, did it on the side that uh, we affected when we panned it over to repair it. Okay, how are we looking now? Not so good. We still have issues. 